Hi everyone! Today, I want to talk to you guys about the weakening of scientific truthfulness and ethics within scientific communication. There used to be a time when scientists lived by two moral rules. Impartiality, the willingness to work to extend knowledge without personal benefit, and communality, the free sharing of one's discoveries with others. This, according to sociologist Robert Merton, was how the reward system of science worked. Scientists who made discoveries first, and made them honestly, were rewarded. Their information was then shared and further research could be conducted. And of course, people who were found faking data or falsifying results were severely punished within the scientific community. This system worked very well. Deliberate fraud rarely occurred. However, within the last 40 years, serious cases of scientific fraud and unethical communication have become more prevalent and have led to the belief that the scientific community is becoming less trustworthy. Politics, funding, peer pressure, and even reputation are only some of the reasons the scientific community is turning to plagiarism, fake data, exaggerating or suppressing information, and using images to conceal the truth. In 1974, Dr. William Summerlin of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York believed he had discovered a way to prepare mice skin so that it could be grafted onto a different species without being rejected. However, Dr. Summerlin kept failing. Expecting visitors to his laboratory, but scared they would see his failure, he used a marker to draw what looked like a black skin graft onto a white mouse. When the ink rubbed off and the scientific community realized what he had done, he was labeled as a perpetrator of fraud. This case was only the beginning of many fraudulent claims in the scientific community, but the prevalence of fraud in the scientific community is rising. Since 1977, the amount of reports retracted for scientific misconduct has increased exponentially. A more recent example of scientific fraud comes from the hot topic of climate change. Climatologists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association have claimed that the NOAA has manipulated the 2015 report by downplaying the global warming hiatus while exaggerating recent warming to push political agendas. John Bates, who was a, was a principal scientist at the NOAA, argued that the lead author, Thomas Carl, did this by carefully choosing information for the report that would validate current global warming beliefs, while excluding vital information that suggested global warming was slowing down. This allegation, along with others, has caused a split in the scientific community. With the lack of integrity, who do we believe? The NOAA or the whistleblowers? Even as scientists with new motives, we all understand that brewing fake data or tampering with real data to make the numbers look better is the worst possible sin in science. With serious cases such as the fake skin graph and the alleged tampered NOAA report, the scientific community is losing trust within society. How do we as scientists resolve this? The answer is simple. Recognize and avoid ethical abuses such as plagiarism, falsifying or fabricating data, suppressing or exaggerating information, stealing information, and using images that conceal the truth. Avoiding these unethical abuses is the key to scientists regaining their trust in society. With the current climate of the scientific community, it is important now more than ever that scientists try their best to be impartial, communal, and absolutely honest and ethical with their research and reports.